Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications Using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to use the Landsat 8 Thermal Infrared Sensor data to map radiant temperature. And what we're going to do is use an image from July. So glaciers, wet snow should be about 0 degrees centigrade during this time period. You can download Landsat 8 images for July from an area in the Alaska Range where the Richardson Highway is passing through the Alaska Range. Okay, so here's the composite image, bands 4, 5, and 7. So band 7 is a shortwave infrared uh, band, and that's displayed in the red. Band 5 is the near-infrared band that's displayed in the green. And band 4 is the red spectral region, and that's displayed using blue. And here is the Richardson Highway, and paralleling the Richardson Highway is the Alaska Trans-Alaska Pipeline. And if we zoom to the extent of the full image, we have lots of wet snow, basically glaciers, in the Alaska range. Okay, so what we're going to do is use band 10 to estimate the radiant temperature of this area. Okay, so the first step is we'll take the pixel values in band 10 and calculate spectral radiance as a function of those pixel values. So to do that, we need to go to the metadata to get the scaling coefficients to calculate spectral radiance. Okay, so I opened up the metadata file with WordPad, and we need to find for band 10 what the coefficient will be to multiply every pixel by. So it's this coefficient. And then for band 10, what is the addition value? So we're going to add 0.1 after we multiply every pixel value by this coefficient. And we can do that using the raster calculator. Okay, so we take our original band 10 raster, multiply it by our scaling coefficient, and then we add 0.10. And I'll output that to a new raster called band 10 spectral radiance, and then just OK. Okay, so from this website, I learned how to calculate radiant temperature. So basically, the first step was to calculate spectral radiance. So now I've got every pixel that has spectral radiance, and that's watts per meter squared per solid cone angle per wavelength of that band. So the second step will be to calculate radiant temperature from spectral radiance. So basically, in my raster calculator, I'm going to do this calculation. So we need a band-specific coefficient K2, K1, and then this will be our spectral radiance value. So we'll do this all in the raster calculator. Okay, so from that website, I got the formula and the coefficients we get from the metadata file. So let's look at the metadata file. So here is the first coefficient for band 10. And here's my second coefficient for band 10. So we're going to use that in the raster calculator. And this will return the radiant temperature in degrees Kelvin. So if you remember from physics, if you subtract minus 273, you'll convert from degrees Kelvin to degrees centigrade. So that's what we'll do in the raster calculator. So minus 273 to give this a raster. And I named it band 10 radiant temperature degrees C dot tiff. And then just OK. Okay, so the result is a raster with a radiant temperature ranging from about negative 6 degrees to 38 degrees centigrade. So now what we'll do is we'll assess what the temperature of wet snow is. It should be near zero. So if we look at the original composite image, these glacier areas should be about zero degrees centigrade. So what we'll do is from that composite image, just add band 7, which is the third pixel value in this composite image. So we'll add band 7 to our data frame. 
So with Landsat 8, band 7, which is the third value in this composite, is the shortwave infrared band. So we'll add that. So it's actually the third value, the shortwave infrared band. And then I'll rename that layer to SWIR for shortwave infrared. And then just OK. So now what we want to know is where are, what are the wet snow shortwave infrared pixel values? So to do that, we could use the identify tool. So first I'll turn off my shortwave infrared and then use the identify tool. So what are the pixel values in these glacier areas? So I want to look at my shortwave infrared layer. So 5615, 5588, 5286, etc. So based on that, what we're going to do is use a threshold of 5,500. So if a pixel has a value less than 5,500, we're going to consider it to be wet snow. And we'll use the contour to create a raster of wet snow pixels. Okay, so our input will be our shortwave infrared band. And the question is, is the pixel value less than 5,500? If that's true, we'll give it a one, that's a wet snow pixel. If it's false, we'll make it no data. And I'll output that to a raster named wet snow pixels .tiff, and then just OK. And then we'll visually check our results. So if you go to unique values, we're going to color code wet snow pixels some bluish color. And then just OK. So everything in blue is a one in that wet snow raster. So it does match wet snow pixels fairly well. And if you want, you can make an adjustment and use a different threshold. But for now, we'll use a threshold of 5,500. Okay, so the next step will be for all these wet snow pixels, what is the radiant temperature? And we'd expect that to be near uh, zero degrees centigrade. So we'll take the wet snow pixels times the radiant temperature in degrees centigrade and then convert it into whole numbers or integers so we could have a value attribute table. And then I output that to a raster named wet snow temperature C dot tiff and then just OK. OK, and if you look at your raster attribute table, you can see that for a value of zero, that's the majority of the pixels. If we sort our count descending, most of our pixels had a value of zero degrees centigrade. OK, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got the quiz questions for you concerning this exercise mapping radiant temperature using Landsat 8 thermal infrared sensor data.